Good morning, everyone. This is Sarah B. Hansen. I've got a great, exciting project for you today using uh, incorporating plastic wrap with watercolor paints on your paper um, to come up with a very interesting um, shape pattern and almost abstract looking um, painting. Uh, the great thing about this project is you don't have to have any experience in art at all or drawing or anything. This is um, playing with colors, playing with shapes, and uh, it's almost like a zentangle or something. I mean, it's just going to be really enjoyable, I believe. Um, you can play with any colors you want to, um, and uh, the shapes themselves just find themselves based on the plastic wrap and how it lands in the color. So. Um, have some fun, enjoy it, and let's get started. Okay, to do your abstract painting, uh, this is a 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, and I'm not using the hot press because the cold press has more bumps, ridges, and um, kind of valleys in the surface of the paper, and so it's going to accept this process much better. Um, and so you want to draw in pencil a little rectangle, maybe half an inch or so in from this 5x7 paper or from your paper. And then take, um, this is blue painter's tape here. It has low tack, low adhesive, and so it doesn't, um, it doesn't, it doesn't stick to the paper as much as some other tape could. Masking tape works as well. So you want to lay that tape on right up to the edge of each one of these pencil lines so that you're giving yourself a nice clean border around your, um, it's gonna be like a white border around your, your paint. So you can take the edge of your fingernail, kind of just run it along the very edge of that where it connects to the paper so that the paint doesn't have a tendency to run underneath it, okay? Now we're ready to get started. Okay, I have some fresh paint squeezed out here. This is Antwerp Blue, this is uh, Opera, and this is Quinacridone Red. Um, and I may or may not dip into that uh, Quinacridone Burnt Orange. This is a kind of a phthalo green, or phthalo blue uh, green shade. Um, so, to begin with, I'm going to dip my paintbrush. This is a bigger mop brush than I normally use because I want to cover a lot of paper, a lot of the paper at one time. So basically filling the entire paper surface with clear water. And you want to have that wait and rest for a little bit. Um, I had this big board, so the setup's kind of weird, but usually now I see a space that I didn't grab there. Okay, you wanna make sure everything's very, very wet. Got my big mop brush here, and you wanna have all ready to go. You wanna have some plastic wrap. And the plastic wrap, don't wrinkle it up too much. You just want a little square of plastic wrap big enough to fit your painting, okay? And so now you've got your, your wet paper, and all the ponds are sipped up. And what I will do first, you wanna get some fairly intense colors going on here. So this is Antwerp Blue, and I am grabbing as much as I can of that. In fact, I'm gonna grab just a little bit more. I'm gonna make a really pretty, really pretty color combination going here of Antwerp Blue and some reds. See if we can get some purples. All right, so this Antwerp Blue does have a lot of green in it though, so we'll counteract some of that. So I'm basically laying in Antwerp Blue in a random texture color. You can see how that's moving out across the paper on its own. Very, very intense. Um, dragging my brush across the surface of the water container. And now I will grab Opera. So I'm grabbing as much Opera as I can on my brush and I'm gonna lay it in next to the blue. And again, some kind of a random, random pattern. This is quinacridone red. Look at that, oh, isn't that gorgeous? You can let the colors kind of kiss each other. It doesn't really matter that much. Just make sure you get some colors into some areas. You can even leave areas of white. So we'll kind of pull some of that out of there. Leave a little areas of white. And then I actually want to grab a little of this quinacridone burnt orange, just a touch down here in the corner. 
um, just to see what happens with that. So it's gonna be fun. And the, the, the patterns are always a surprise, you guys. It's always fun to see the patterns on these things. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to lay this plastic wrap right over the top of it. Now, you can push it around a little bit. You want those colors to be very, very, very intense. If the colors aren't intense, uh, this isn't gonna work as well. Dark colors usually work really well, but a combination of dark and light are great. You can push these little um, creases around it if you want to. And then, the secret to this, it's a big secret. <laughs> but it's a real secret. It's not a secret. It's a must do. And that is you have to let this dry by itself like overnight. So I'll visit you again in the morning. All right, before we let this dry completely, I wanna just show you um, how this looks in here so you can kind of get a close up view of it. You can see that you can move these, um, these little pieces around if you want to, like I showed you before, and get the creases right where you want them or just kind of leave it. Um, I, for the most part, I just leave it unless I'm trying to do something specific. But since this is abstract, it can just be whatever it is. And once you, once you get it the way you want it, then set it, let it go. Just leave it overnight. I mean, seriously, I've tried so many times to blow dry this um, or, or pull it off too soon. It just doesn't work. So anyway, that's how it looks and we'll let it set overnight. All right, this is tomorrow morning. It, tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this is the next day. Um, and you can see here that uh, the plastic peels right off. And there's your abstract, um, really super cool pattern. And depending on what colors you use, you'll have lights and darks and different areas. If it feels light, to you, um, it's because the colors you used were a little bit light. I've used pretty intense colors here, and so it looks a lot more intense, maybe, than yours does. Um, and then to take the tape off, you wanna pull away from your picture. And be kinda careful because sometimes this tape can adhere a little tight and tear your paper. And if you're pulling in towards your painting, you might tear off this edge and rip your paper. So best thing is to remove the tape, pulling away from your painting. Look at that white border. Isn't that gorgeous? So at this point in time, you can just leave this and have this fun, beautiful abstract painting that is maybe suggestive of I don't know, mine kind of looks like the bottom of a pond or, you know, something like that. I'll pull the rest of this off here. Look at that. Isn't that, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So, like I said, you can leave this totally like this and be done with this project. Um, you can take a Sharpie to the shapes and find some shapes, or you could even glaze over it if you'd like to um, and make a, more of an abstract painting. Okay, and if you wanted to add on to this fun abstract, you could find actual shapes in here. You could create something fun um, on this, like a, an act, like a vase of flowers or some rocks or something real on top of this. Or you could go in and find these shapes by adding a glaze in some of these areas and just creating a patterned abstract, which is what I'm going to be doing. On this end and so I'm painting around those little shapes in there um, with the same colors that I already used in my palette and you can add the colors right on top of like for instance this is mostly Antwerp so I can add those colors on top of Antwerp or I can change it up and maybe on top of this Antwerp or maybe where would I put this maybe over here how about here I'll add a red over here in this shape. Sometimes I've done this project um, by making flowers or leaf patterns behind these, which is really cool and interesting. Um, but right now I'm just adding random shapes just for a fun, um, kind of a sparkle. And uh, we'll see how it turns out here. Just keep 
doing that. Make sure your paper's totally dry before you do this step uh, because otherwise you're gonna be lifting things up. Okay, you can see right here, I added some glazing on top of these, pulled out some shapes um, and basically dried it. Uh, and the other thing that's kind of fun, I have some pencils here. These are well used, as you can see, they're kind of short now, um, but these are watercolor pencils and you can use those over top something like this and further make a fun pattern within here that maybe would outline some of these shapes. You can also, like I said, do a Sharpie or something that's kind of um, black or gray or light. Depends on your colors that you have, really, um, because if you have dark colors like mine, um, then, the, then the lighter pencils will show up a little bit more. So, so this is pretty fun and you can go in and draw a bunch of different shapes on this. All right, so you can see in here, I used watercolor pencil to find these shapes in here and basically just followed uh, the outline of the plastic wrap and made little uh, shapes around some of these darker colors, some of the lighter colors, filled in a few here and there. And it's just an interesting, abstract, fun watercolor painting that you can do. And it's almost like, um, what did you, I think it's called Zentangle or something like that, I'm trying to remember. Um, but that is a, a, a really great, almost meditative time you can spend creating your own pattern and really enjoying it and have fun. You don't have to make it look like anything. Um, you just enjoy it and kind of get into it and um, just feel better at the end. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this lesson. Um, take care out there, everyone. Be safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>